Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to change my web page background color using range sliders. Okay, so I already have a page set up, and that page is blank, so let's go ahead and get started. In the body of the page, I want to provide my user some range sliders so that they can just click and drag red, green, and blue values to change the background color of the page uh, dynamically. So let's see what we've got here. I've already got a headline one, a headline two. I'm going to modify this headline two a little bit. I'm going to put a span in there with ID equals color output. It'll be an empty span, and my intention is to have the RGB code displayed in here as the user is changing it. But because it's empty and it's an inline element, no one's going to see it until the color changes. The headline text won't be any different. And I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of uh, sliders. So I am going to use a label, label tag, and I'll call my first one red. I'm not using four attributes on these, although that's probably a good idea, but not as critical with a label or with a input type range. Speaking of which, input type equals range. That's going to give my user a, a slider that they can click and drag left and right. I suppose up and down if we were to rotate them. Uh, I'm going to give it an ID, range red, and I'm going to give it a starting value. I'll start it off with zero, a min value of zero, and a max value of 255. So RGB values can range from zero to 255 for each of the three parts, red, green, and blue. So zero, zero, zero would be black, 255, 255, 255 would be white, and then there's 16.7 million color combinations all in between. And the syntax is gonna be pretty similar for the green and blue, so I'll just copy that, paste and paste, red, green, blue, and of course I have to change out my IDs a bit here blue, green, perfect. You know what, I'm gonna change my values. Instead of zero, 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 I'm gonna change my values to four, 139, and 168. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I happen to know that the RGB code for this background color blue that I'm starting off with is uh, 0, 139, I'm sorry, is four, 139, 168. So that way my range sliders are already set to the current background color. All right, now on to the scripty side of things. So I'm going to go ahead and create a function in here called change color. And the first thing I'm going to do is declare some variables. So I'm going to let the variable red equal to document.get element by ID. And that's going to be my range red value. So I need to get the value from that red slider, and that's going to be my first variable. My other two are going to be pretty similar. So red, green, and blue, green, and blue. So remember, what I'm getting from these range sliders are numbers ranging between 0 and 255. Now with my fourth variable, the color, I'm going to construct an RGB value. So I'm going to start off with a little string here, RGB opening parentheses. Notice that's in quotes, single quotes, plus my red value, plus comma. Oops, I used double quotes there. I don't want to do that. Comma, plus my green value, plus a comma, plus my blue value, plus the end of the RGB syntax. So RGB opening parentheses, red, comma, green, comma, blue, closing parentheses. Looks good. Now that I've got that color variable set up with my RGB value, document.get, uh, nope, don't need to do that, document.body.style.background color is going to be equal to my color. Cool. And I also want to display the color in my color output right up there. So for that one, document.get element by ID, color output, enter HTML is going to be equal to. Now I think what I'll do, I, I'm going to 
you know, select your color. I want a colon and then the RGB value. So I'll do another little string here where I do a colon space plus the color. So that'll display a colon and then the RGB value up there. So that is my function. And the only other thing I need to do is just have some event listeners so that this function will be triggered when anybody changes the inputs, uh, regardless of which one they do. I'm going to end up creating three of them, but I'll do one document.get element by ID range red add event listener. And then I need the, um, the event. In this case, the event is going to be input. And then, of course, the function being called is going to be change color. So that's my add event listener. And by the way, uh, MDN is a great reference here. So I'm just looking at the MDN event uh, reference. And they're very nicely organized, all the various events you might want to use. And of course, the one I'm using is a value change event for input. So good information there over at uh, MDN. So basically, whenever my, range, my red range slider changes, even though there is a change event, by the way, it does something a little different, not as cool. Um, the in, when it changes the input, the change color function is going to be called. I like it. I like it a lot. Let me go ahead and copy this. Paste it a couple times. I have three event listeners, one for each of my sliders. And now we can test it out. All right, let's see how it works. Go ahead and refresh. Change a little bit of red. There we go. Change a little bit of green change a little bit of blue. Pretty nice. And of course, we have the change happening as soon as the input slider changes, the range slider changes. And of course, I've got my RGB values displaying right up here in the headline too. So yeah, pretty neat stuff. So a little function to change color, getting that information from input type range sliders. Take care.